I decided I'm going to do a water change on this tank. This is the, <clears throat> excuse me, the baby tank. Tank with all the baby Corys and baby Betta. And there is a little one right there, a little, one of the little albino Bettas, or I don't know if they're, it's actually a platinum. Uh, at least that's what I'm thinking it's going to be. The mother is a platinum Dumbo here. But anyway, I've been adding water to this tank uh, to keep topping it off with evaporation. But as you keep doing that, uh, concentrations of anything that's probably not beneficial can start building up. So what I'm doing, and there's a bunch of babies feeding on an old, uh, one of the Fluval Bug Bites uh, Algae Crisps. Um, and they're still, they're growing. So they're, yeah, I don't know, pushing three weeks old now from hatch. I think they hatched out about the 18th of October. Um, and this old fishbowl is still in there, and I'm just going to leave it in there until, you know, the babies are big enough. I don't want to mess with it too much. Um, but what I am doing is with a measuring cup, so I don't siphon any of these little guys out of here, I am just uh, taking water out a little at a time. And then very, very carefully going through and looking to make sure I didn't pull out any fish. And I did one, uh, I did notice a little, I think it was a baby betta. Um, so I drained off most of the water and then poured what was left with the little baby back into the tank. Uh, and in this one, I don't see any. So I'm gonna pour it into this bucket I've got going here. And before this is all said and done, I will check the bucket really well, too, to make sure I'm not throwing any out. So after being as careful as I could, I did find one in here. It's in the net. There it goes. Right towards the bottom. Swimming towards the left, right along that seam. And it was not easy to see, but I caught him. So then when I'm done, I've got a bucket of water here. It's got a little bit of a, a API, uh, the, the tap water conditioner for the chloramines and chlorines. And I will set that. What I've been doing is setting it up on top of the light here and using some airline and making a siphon. So it just fills it really slowly. Uh, so it's not to shock these little guys, but this bucket's been sitting in here for, I don't know, an hour, hour and a half now. So it should be pretty well acclimated temperature wise to the same as the room. But there is also a little heater uh, in this tank, keeping the temperature. Yeah, I'm not even sure what, probably mid 70s. Let's take a look because the heater control is around here somewhere. At least I think it is. Um, hiding behind the tank. Obviously, this was kind of an impromptu video, and that's okay. Uh, it is 76 Fahrenheit. And I keep the room pretty warm, too, which can get a little uncomfortable, but it makes it a little easier for the fish, for the heater. So I'm going to finish draining this, and then I'm going to fill it back up. But I just wanted to share the process with you guys. Uh, I haven't done a, a, a water test, and I probably ought to. Uh, I could do it. Before, uh, before I fill this up, maybe I will, and then I'll add that to this video. And oh, So having said that I haven't done a water parameters check, I thought I should do a water parameters check. And these are the results, and they look okay. That's the ammonia on uh, the left, and then the nitrites in the middle here. I should watch where my finger's going, there we go. And nitrates, the nitrates look probably maybe like five parts per million. Plants will suck up a lot of that. The fish, the fish are going to be all right with it. Um, the ammonia, low ammonia, that's the key. Because the ammonia, from my understanding, is what actually will burn their gills and, and cause serious damage and kill fish. So the ammonia is right where it's supposed to be. Uh, the nitrites are right where they're supposed to be all the way up here. It looks like zero parts per million. And then the... Uh, nitrates look like they might be somewhere between zero and five parts per million. And I can live with that because the fish can live with that. So let's see if we can show that 
it's always so subjective. Yeah, it's probably, yeah, I think it's closer to zero. So anyway, that's, uh, finally did a, a water parameters check. Look, there's another one of those little, um, I think it's another platinum, oh, it just went under the leaf of that Amazon frog bit. But there's, there's all kinds of fish in here. And I was really hoping there'd be a couple little shrimp in here too that I, I poured in and they were really small. They were uh, a filter find. When I was cleaning a filter out, they came. Uh, my wife suggested dump them in here, but I haven't seen them since. So I don't know if they're still around and just hiding really well. There's a lot of places to hide, which is really good for the babies, for the beta, for the uh, or beta, whatever you like, and for the little baby quarries. These are all bronze quarries. There may or may not be two or three... Uh, what are they, the false Julie quarries, uh, trilineatus, quarry trilineatus. Because um, I found some eggs of those and threw them in with the mix. Uh, but anyway, yeah, this there's a lot of mulm on the bottom of the tank. And it's going to stay that way. It's uh, these, and, and there's little pieces of wood, uh, the biofilm growing on that. Um, this all provides just a natural food source. I was feeding these a little bit with the Hikari, I've got to pack it around here somewhere. Yeah, Hikari, Hikari first bites, put just a little bit in. And I was also feeding some Daphnia that I was trying to grow out back and I had a little success with it, not much. Uh, and I think mostly, uh, and I've seen, you know, I don't know if there's some sort of, I know they call Daphnia water flea, but I've also seen these little microscopic, well, microscopic, itty bitty little things jumping across the surface of the water. So I'm guessing there is uh, enough wildlife in here to actually feed these fish naturally because I'm not doing much to them. They love the algae crisps, uh, but I'm not doing much to them or for them, and they seem to be thriving really well. This is one of those things where, you know, I hate to you you know say neglect, but it sure seems to be working. I don't know. It's like controlled neglect. How's that? Um, but it seems to be working, so I'm going with it because that's that's what counts. Uh, for plants, I've got a little bit of java fern stuck in the back here. It was just a clump I threw in, and then uh, and I think it's just free floating. I've got uh, uh, what's this hornwort? Uh, God, I just fished a bunch of this stuff out of other tanks. It is a weed, and, and then there's duckweed, and also. This stuff that's sitting on top of the bowl, Rickia water spangles, another surface floater, and then the Amazon frog bit, another surface floater. And all these, I think, are helping to keep the water parameters pretty clean. Um, and then there's pieces of, of wood in here, uh, tree branches from a tree that's outside. It's Brachychite and Popolneus, or Kurzong bottle tree. And I, they're just dried sticks that I picked up and, and just dropped them in. Um, I don't remember if I had like soaked these or not. A lot of times I don't. I just, if they're dried up, I rinse them off and just drop them in. Eventually they sink. So the, these went right to the bottom. So they might have already been, um, already been saturated or not. I, I don't even remember. Uh, the rocks were in the fishbowl to hold, the, hold it down so it wouldn't float away when I was starting this bed of breeding project. And I got this little tiny terracotta pot with some crypts in it. And I think they're crypt uh, um, wentii, the, the green. So that's kind of where this tank is. Uh, it's been a fun project so far. And, and I'm just really astounded by the level of success. Uh, these dead leaves here, they are uh, Amazon sword that are in another tank. In fact, they were in the tank that... Uh, uh, bronze quarries were in. These are the leaves that the bronze quarry laid their eggs on. So when I noticed them, I just cut the leaves off and stuck them in this fishbowl. Uh, and, and they, within a, about three days, I think that was on the the 15th of, uh, where are we, October. Um, and, and I think it was about the 18th and they were mostly all hatched out. And then I dropped a couple, uh, the false Julie Corey's Corey eggs in that were in another tank that I saw stuck to some of this uh, uh, hornwort that's floating around in this other tank. So they, they just deposit, there were just three eggs there. The the bronze Corey's, there were like 60 plus eggs 
on three leaves. And I found a cluster on the front of the tank that uh, on the glass, inside the glass, uh, I, I just left. I tried to pull them off, but they're smaller and they just seem squishier than, than the, turns out, than the false Julie quarry eggs are. Those seemed a little harder, uh, a little easier to pull, pull apart. But so I just left them and, and the next day they were mostly all gone. And two days later, they were all gone. So whoever ate them, I don't know, plecos, uh, the quarries, uh, ember tetras, uh, autosynclus, those are the other inhabitants in the tank that the bronze quarries came from. So anyway, I'll keep you guys posted. This has been a fun project. They are really growing. They're starting to look like little bitty fish. Well, you know, as little bitty fish go. And I wouldn't be surprised if... Uh, you could see them up close. You might even see their little mustaches already, which are starting to form their little barbels. They are cute, and I do like quarries. So I've got, I think, six species now. I'm, I'm working on a seventh one. If uh, Brandon over at Coachella Valley Aquatics still has them, he had a quarry. I think they're Adolfoi. Adolf so I'm going to go see if he's still got some. It's been a while, so hopefully he still does, and I'll get another quarry. Part of a great cleanup crew, but also just really cool little fish. So anyway, I will catch you all on the rebound. And it's Sunday, November 5, so everybody have a great, great week upcoming.